it's a great pleasure to be here with you. It's a great pleasure to speak after uh, two of my friends and uh, one of my board, board members. I, uh, I hope he won't listen. I actually didn't know till now that he's got 30 years of experience in, in space industry. I actually didn't suspect that he's that old. But uh, he's been a great board member, so uh, let's not tell him that. Um, guys, it's, it's great to be here. We, we, are born, uh, we were born out of Otaniemi. We are a startup coming from Alto University. And uh, we've been very excited to, uh, to speak here at Slash, and we are very excited to make an announcement at Slash. I guess why we speak last is because ISA is very complementary to what the other two companies have been doing, and it kind of closes the value chain link in terms of new space. I guess as you were all listening to a great presentation about uh, propulsion systems and rockets, you all wondered, all right, that's, that's great that we have smaller rockets, but how does it really change our lives? I'm, I'm not sure how many of you are actually going to purchase a single rocket. So ISAC takes advantage of these two things in order to deliver something that you guys can actually use, which is information. So our mission statement is to enable everyone to make better decisions based on timely and reliable Earth observation data. As you can see, funnily enough, in our mission statement, we don't even have space. We try to be platform agnostic. We do use satellites. We do build satellites. And I will talk about satellites a lot. But moreover, we are a data company. We try to bring as much data into our servers. Then we try to process them. We try to derive information out of the data. And we try to hand the data to you and the information to you so you can make better decisions. But let me, let me get to the satellites. And maybe it will get a little bit more clear what we are doing. So the satellites that we are building look like this. That's our first satellite. It's actually in Otaniemi, quite uh, close to the university. So whenever you are there, you can, uh, you can stop by. And uh, this is how it looks when we uh, try to do something about it. Uh, as you can see, we are already wearing the white coats. So it, uh, it all looks professional. And there, there's an anechoic chamber. So, so we are very happy. That's how the satellites look in space. And maybe now I will get to some of the terminology that has been used in the beginning, uh, the synthetic aperture radar part. So this satellite is, is unique because it has a very unique instrument. Actually, the instrument is what we have spent the last four years building and designing. The satellite itself, as said, is just a platform, and you try to be platform agnostic. What we really are good at is building synthetic aperture radars. And what's so great about synthetic aperture radar is it produces images that look like this. And it produces these images regardless of weather conditions or time of day. So you can actually take that image, and you can see any place around the globe, and you can see it regardless whether it's dark, whether it's snowy, whether it's raining, or whether whatever is happening over there. You have a reliable source of information. And if you uh, look very closely at this image, uh, you will realize that you can't see people, but you can see cars, which means that every time we take an image, we have a 2,500 millions of square kilometers, and we get to see every car within that area. And so, this image is something that humanity in general has seen before. SAR as a technology is, is not something extremely innovative. It's the fact that it's so much smaller and so much cheaper that makes it extraordinary. And why is that important? The important is because if something is small and low cost, you can launch a lot of those and you can create a constellation. And that's how ISIS constellation look like. This is how 18 satellites distributed over different orbital planes cover the entire globe. And what it allows us to do is allows us to fly over any location of your choice within three hours from the moment you give us a call. And then we can fly over the same location every three hours after that. So we can take eight pictures of Helsinki every 24 hours, which means that we can see all the cars in Helsinki every three hours, and we can see how they change and how, they, how patterns move. And so just to give you a feeling on how much data the constellation like this produces, I uh, took the liberty of uh, bringing an example. You probably are all familiar with the, the continent uh, displayed on the picture. It's actually about uh, 10 million square kilometers in size, and that's about the area that the constellation covers within 24 hours, which means that you can every day take a picture of the entire Europe, and within that picture, you will be able to count all the single cars, all trees, all vessels, all trains, all houses, and you will be able to say whether something has changed from the last day to today, and you will be able to say whether something has changed from the last three hours to now. And so this constellation will be flying in 2020, and uh, we hope to use it for a variety of use cases, which brings us back to the, to the information that we are actually trying to deliver to our customers. No one is really going to buy our satellites. 
no one really is going to buy the, the pictures themselves, but people are going to ask us questions, and we are going to hand them over answers. And so what are they going to ask? So there's a, a set of use cases that we started working with. One of the first ones is a maritime use case, where we help people identify vessels on seas. Actually, seas and oceans are ones of the least surveyed areas on the globe. There are so many sensors on the ground on land, but there are virtually no sensors on seas. And that's why we allow all the human trafficking to happen, uh, drug trafficking, all the, the migration that happens that we can't control, all the illegal fishing that happens that we can't control. And all of this can be actually tackled relatively easily if only we had a sensor that allows us to monitor these places on a frequent basis. And the same goes with, with forestry. If we can monitor forest every three hours, we can say whether the forest is still there. And if it's not, it means that either it has burned out or someone has illegally cut it down. Or we can see whether the forest has been growing the way we planted it. And it goes closer to, to you guys, which, which means that we can control also cities. We can tell you how the traffic patterns form. We can tell you whether there are empty car spots in front of the parking lot or in front of the store that you're going to. We can tell you whether there are cars in front of your house that you didn't expect. We can tell you whether uh, uh, your wife and husband have left to work already or not. Uh, we actually can tell that, and we can tell that every three hours, everywhere around the globe. Uh, so that's what we deliver. And I wanted to share with you, especially as we are we've started over here, uh, a bit of history and uh, show you a few pictures on, on how we've been, we've been making progress from day one. And it's important to me because the paradigm has shifted dramatically. Uh, we used to follow a very waterfall-like model in space design. We used to uh, have a set of requirements and a 10-year plan. And at the, the end of 10 years, you would have a big satellite that someone has paid a billion for. And so what we do is we continuously iterate on our designs. We build more or less a design every three months. We've built about 10 designs and 10 prototypes of our synthetic aperture radar. And every time we test it, we learn something more. So this is, this is about 2012. Uh, we've built our first prototype. That's how the satellite looked four to five years back. Uh, you can probably see that uh, based on the faces, uh, we don't really know what we are doing. But uh, we kept on learning. And after this one, we actually took the same plank and we flew it on one of the university's aircraft. Uh, it's an interesting experiment because actually someone paid us to do it. And the company that paid us to do it was, was ExxonMobil. Exxon was extremely interested whether we would be able to see eyes with our instruments. So they actually financed us taking the plaque on board of an aircraft and fly over, over ocean to see eyes. Based on our experiment and based on all the data that we've gathered, we've built another much smaller, much more compact system. And then another one, and then another one. And this one we actually sold. This one was already so compact and so small that someone actually came over and said, hey, why don't you guys sell it to us? And since that was a nice person, we, we indeed delivered the system as it is. And after that, we, we went to the satellite, and we got to the place where we wanted to actually be. And over that period of time, starting from 2012 to, to now, we actually grew from two to about 50 people. And uh, we've raised over $20 million in financing, both from uh, VCs in Finland, in the UK, and uh, VCs in Silicon Valley. So, What's next for ISAI? Uh, we've been doing all these great prototypes. We've been flying them. We've been getting uh, people to, to pay for that. And now we uh, took the liberty to use this stage and this time and slash, which is actually our home ground, to make the announcement that so many people have been talking about. So uh, we prepared a small video for that. And uh, let's take a look at it. So guys, I'm very happy to announce, and I'm glad that you're all here, that this satellite actually will be launched in the next 30 days. We have booked this launch spot about two years ago. We've never told anyone about this one. We've told people about the one that's six months away. And we've built a satellite a little bit faster than we hoped for in the beginning. And we decided that we are going to share this launch date with people just a few days in advance. And we decided that now it's a perfect time, especially because Slash is coming and all of you are over here. And the satellite is actually safely in India. It's waiting in uh, Chennai. 
and it's being integrated into the PSLV C40 as we, as we speak. And uh, this is going to be a first synthetic aperture satellite ever that costs less than 100 millions. It actually is not the first one that costs less than 100. <laughs> it's actually 100 times cheaper than that. So um, that's what uh, brought us from a small startup in Otaniemi. And uh, four years after that, we are very glad to be here back with you and, uh, and announce the launch of our first satellite. So once it's in orbit, what we will do is we will start delivering our first data. And we would be very glad if uh, any of you or all of you would reach out to us and tell us what we could use this data for. Because ultimately, even though I told about the, the maritime use case and the forest and the cities, we are still searching. This is a global system. It's meant to deliver information for everyone. We think that there are more use cases that we know of. And we need everyone's help to basically figure out what we can do with all the data. We've got three more launches scheduled, so three more announcements uh, to go. We've got two more launches around summer, and we've got one more launch in autumn 2018. So we hope to reach around four satellite constellations, and then go on to eight satellite constellations in 19, and uh, 18 satellite constellations in 2020. Uh, so I feel like if there is one thing that we, we've learned over the time that we were, we were building our satellites, is that almost regardless of, of what you do, you should uh, stay true to your values. And you should always remember the most efficient way that you can work with and the results that it brings. Thank you very much.